Last time on Ace Attorney Apollo Justice. Hey guys, Raiden here, and welcome back to Ace Attorney Path of Fuck. Wrong game. <laughs> Keep that in mind, Capcom. That could be a good title for a game. Hey guys, Raiden here, and welcome back to Ace Attorney Apollo Justice. Last time, I failed at some very, very basic questions, and you guys can expect a lot of that. <laughs> I know it was really painful for you guys to watch, I heard down in the comments, but uh, I just want to thank you. This series is doing not as well as Path of Radiance, which is what I expected, but it's still going pretty strong, honestly. Like, you guys seem to enjoy this, and thank you for waiting. I had a bit of a problem with the whole save state system, but now I have it down, and I do have to save sometimes. Like this. Or this, I guess I should say. Like that, because the basic saves won't work for whatever reason, so we're just going to have to use this way. So, last time we were on Miss Olga's testimony. He's the one who did it. I didn't let him out of my sight until the cops got there. Different personality, but the same testimony. I believe you have her where you want her, Justice. The circumstances have changed, yet her testimony is not. That means... There's got to be a contradiction in there. Quite... Alright, so, let's see what she was talking about, because honestly, I don't remember. That night I planned- That night, I planted the card like I was supposed to. And Wright lost his last hand, just like he was supposed to. Then Smith searched him. But the planted card was gone and the trap failed. The next moment, Wright picked up the bottle and swung it. He's the one who did, and I didn't let him out of my sight till the cops got there. Oh, I think I got it. I think I got it. Uh, because they said they couldn't get a cell phone reception from the bottom floor, so if we present his cell phone. Objection! There we go. Miss Orley, we've, we have a record here that clearly contradicts what you just said. It states that the police were alerted by a report from the defendant. Eh? And we know that the defendant left the room, climbed the stairs, and made that phone call from the first floor of the Borscht Bowl Club. Uh, uh, sweat. I'm sweating so hard. So explain, how you kept your eyes on the defendant when he left the room entirely? Oh, what the f- <laughs> What was that face? <laughs> what was that? The man who picked up a bottle- Oh, that's Olga talking. The man who picked up a bottle and swung it that night, it wasn't the defendant. Who was it then? Tell me! I want to know! It's not very helpful if you're holding back a bunch of information. I'd prefer if you kind of told us everything, you know? Oh, what's happening now? Showdown time? Showdown time! You dirty cheat! Check his pockets. It, it's gone! The card's gone! You lose. Oh. <laughs> I am the Terminator. Just then, Smith grabbed the bottle from next to right. And he hit me. What? He hit you on the back of the neck. Oh, because she. Oh, because he thought you cheated. Okay. You master of cheating, you turned out to be. Eek. So you got hit. When I came to, the victim was already dead. Is that it? Or is, is that it? <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the judge. <laughs> That's why I couldn't reveal who I really was. If it came out that I was in league with Smith, I'd be a suspect for sure. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Well, where does this leave us? M madness This is madness. This is Sparta. I'm dreaming. It must have been me who was hit with the bottle. And I'm imagining all of this. <laughs> it appears our prosecution is at its wit's end, and frankly, I can't blame him. Mr. Gavin, what do you think about this turn of events? Uh, m mister Gavin, sir? I believe that as the defense in this case... We're compelled to call Miss Orley a big fat liar. What? what what Three were in that room the night of the murder. The defendant, the victim, and her. And she has a motive. A, a motive? Her plot foiled, the witness got into an argument with her client. Mr. Smith. And the denount- uh, the, the denouement of that argument was murder. What? what I didn't- I'm, I'm no killer. 
It's a trap! Someone's trying to frame me! Heh heh heh. Oh god, Phoenix, what do you- what could you possibly have to spout now? But I didn't tell you guys! That night I had a gun! What? And they- it, she had a gun too! Okay, continue. And there were samurai there, and dragons! What? what And Oscar was there too! What, how- who is that? Oh, hello, bitches. What tangle webs we weave when we practice to deceive? So tangled we catch ourselves in the process. M mr Wright! Such hasty conclusion. It's not like you, Kristoff Gavin. What are you saying? Why not consider the possibility, the other possibility, that there was another person in the room at the time of the murder? R right, like Mr. Wright was saying before recess. A single card was swapped into the victim's hand after the murder. And the one who swapped the card didn't know two colors of the cards were being used. A fourth person. Like, his objection voice is so high-pitched, it's perfect. It's like, OBJECTION! <laughs> Meepo, is that you? That's why I decided to bring this case to the court. Here, where there's no escape and no chance for deception. The perfect place to catch the real criminal. The, the real criminal? And we're in luck. A cue, to, wait, a cue to the real criminal's identity was kindly provided for us. And right at the beginning of the trial, no less. What? 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 Apollo, perhaps you know what I'm talking about. No, I really don't. I, I don't know anything. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, sorry. Remember what I said? The fourth person who swapped the cards made one critical error. He or she wasn't considering the color on the back of the cards. Right. But how could such an obvious mistake occur? The cards used for the last game were red. Yet, there is one person here in our court who thought those cards were blue. Yeah, I had that impression too, but why? Well, Apollo, think you can figure out who it was? It's not me, I swear! <laughs> Who is this fourth person? Why do I always get put on the spot like this? I know what you mean, Apollo. Let's hear. Let's hear what the defense has to say. Who was it? You know, now that I think about it, the balance of power between Phoenix, uh, Miles Edgeworth, and Apollo is skewered. I mean, I haven't played Edgeworth Investigations, but I heard about his special technique. I mean, let's think about this. Miles Edgeworth uses basic logic as his special ability. Then, Apollo Justice uses looking at people really hard. And then Phoenix Wright can tell if someone's lying. There is a slight gap in power between a lot of these, like, abilities. Like, Phoenix is just broken in God tier. While the other two are just like, look, I can do a thing. Who thought the cards used in the final game were blue? Wait, what? I don't know. <laughs> I- I don't know. Am I- like, I- I went to this game like a week ago, so I don't remember. It's just gonna be a guessing game at the moment. Uh, he didn't know, but I feel like after him saying it wasn't me was too obvious. What person at this court thought that Shady Smith? He's been here the whole time. <laughs> uh, Gavin? <sighs> really, there's only- a couple of people who I could... It's either him or him. I don't think it's her. And he's not here. He's dead. <laughs> so... As I expected. Your eyes and ear are sharp as your hair. Yeah, I totally didn't just guess that. Oh, this music's... I like this music. Is this the cornered music for this game? I like it. I, I was right? <laughs> I know, Apollo. I know what you mean. Christoph Gavin, you were the fourth person that night. But, but of course Mr. Gavin knows the color of the cards. How would he? As you can see, the photo of the crime scene is black and white. You can't tell which of the cards are blue and the ones on the floor or the table. But, but look! You can see the colors in this photo. Yes, but when he said the cards were blue, it was well before this evidence came to light. It's true that the defendant get engaged in a game of poker with the victim. Yet it was only that, a game in pursuit in the purest sense, 
A competition, if you might. A competition? Yes, a test of wits, a wits, a silent clash of passions. Only the cards, their backs, wreathed in blue flame, know the final outcome. Oh, yeah, you're right, he did say that. He wasn't just spouting poetic bullshit, I guess. <laughs> well, Kristoff? Look at that smile, he's still so... M Mr. Gavin? Mr. Gavin, is there something the matter? N n no, nothing. Excuse me, I was just so... sudden. Right. You aren't seriously accusing me, are you? Oh, Kristoff? You know even I'd never take a joke this far. Damn, it's like Battle of the... I don't know. Courtmasters? It says gone beyond ridiculous, beyond dumb. This is insanity. The defendant accusing his own defense attorney of murder? I assure you, I'm quite sane. <laughs> what possible connection could Mr. Gavin have to the victim? I wasn't aware that I had a connection to Mr. Smith either. Yes, but Gavin and the victim had never even met. Well, what if they have? Huh? There's a possibility after all. They may have met that night before the game started. What are you suggesting? Is this the truth Mr. Wright was saying was staying silent about? Well, only one thing to do. Mr. Wright, the defense would like to request that you testify to the court. The defense would like to request no such thing. Oh god. Kristoff is Oh, this is interesting. If Kristoff is the murderer, that's really cool, but Mr. Gavin? Testimonies must relate to the case. How could anything happening before the game of poker be related? Oh no, you're you're hiding something. I'm not sure I follow, Mr. Gavin. As I explained before, the defense believes that Miss Orley. I as am I to assume you speak for Mr. Justice in this? He is the defense, not you. Ah, uh, uh, damn. Mr. Justice, this is a matter of Mr. Wright's testimony. Is up to you. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> does the court, in your opinion, need to hear Mr. Wright's testimony? Yeah, that would make sense. That's why Kristoff would show up all of a sudden. Is because it's like, it's weird that he kind of showed up next to Apollo. And that Apollo was forced on to take such a simple case. Because Kristoff was there. I I'm not sure how that, hmm. I don't know. It makes sense, though. I need to hear the testimony. This was Mr. Wright's strategy. He was planning this all along, and I intend to see it through. The defense would like to request that Mr. Wright testify to the court. At two, Justice, you would betray me, your teacher. I'm sorry, Mr. Gavin, this isn't about loyalty. This is about the truth. Damn, he's already all about justice. <laughs> Very well, the defendant, Mr. Wright, will take the stand, please. Witness testimony! That evening, Kristoff and I had dinner. We sat at the table at this photograph. Shady Smith walked in five minutes after Kristoff left. When the trap failed, Smith hit the waitress. The girl was knocked out cold and Smith was uncontrollable. I left to call the police. When I returned, he was dead, blood streaming from a cut on his forehead. That's when I made another phone call to the defense attorney, Gavin. Mr. Gavin? You were at the Borsch Bowl Club the night of the murder? I dine with him rather frequently. And he talked to the defendant on the phone directly after the murder? Quite against my will, I had become involved in a murder. I thought I might be in need of a lawyer, so I called him. You were planning this all along, weren't you, right? Alright, that's not, that's not the right voice. Just because you wanted to drag me into your little murder trial. The only thing I want is the truth. As I did back then, and now. I thought my office was doing you a favor when we took on your defense. It appears that I was wrong. Oh, I guess Apollo does work at his office then, so it still does make sense, but... Very well, the defense may cross-examine the witness. Justice? Sir, sir! He's lying and you're going to expose him. Uh, understood, sir? Mr. Gavin versus Mr. Wright, this can't end well. Why can't I have a normal I say that every single time, dude? 
No, actually, that's not what I want. I have jury duty coming up, and I, I want it to be like this. <laughs> that evening, Kristoff and I had dinner, and we sat at the table in this photograph. I need to take a look at that photograph, because I haven't looked at that one in a very long time. I don't see anything out of place. Just half-eaten food. Sitting at a table, talking. I see that the grape bottles are over here, which is the only substantial thing, and there's some borscht over here. Uh, he still has his pendant on at the time, it looks like. So I'll, I'll take note of all that. You had dinner with Mr. Gavin? Yes, he dines with me at the Borscht Bowl Club quite frequently. We're enjoying a usual dinner at our usual spot, as usual. Usual. I always eat at the table closest to the piano. I see. Where Mr. Smith was sitting. So the plates and such on the table were from your dinner? Indeed. The remnants of my meal with Kristoff. We dined for two hours, then Kristoff left after that. Shady Smith walked in five minutes after Kristoff left. Five minutes? So the two of them could have passed in the restaurant during that time. That would have been a fateful encounter to be sure. Objection! Oh god, I hate how he sounds. He sounds like a monkey. One of the monkeys from like, I don't know, Ape Escape or something. Hehehe. <laughs> oh, Mr. Wright. What, what, wait, what? Oh, Mr. Wright, what was it you just said? Kristoff Gavin and Shady Smith may have met? I believe I did say that. Here I was nervous about this meeting, and now we hear they just passed in the hall? Hmm. That does seem a little weak as a pretense for murder. Oh, it would be if that was all that really happened. Come on, Mr. Wright, just... What are you hiding this time? There's no point. Just tell me, I know you're trying to, like, train me to be the ultimate lawyer or whatever, the ultimate defense attorney, but wait. When the, when the trap failed, Smith hit the waitress. I just want to look at all the evidence one more time. Smith hit the waitress. Crime photo, that doesn't have anything to do with anything. What about the autopsy report? The time of death was around 2 a.m. April 17th. Death caused by a single blow to the forehead. About this failed trap. This is the same trap that Miss Oga Orly mentioned. The plan was simple, elegant, really. You see, we set up a trap of sorts. It was to plant a card in Wright's pocket beforehand. And then deal five aces during one of their games. When their hands were revealed, Smith would call him out and search Wright. He would then pull out the planted card and the trap would snap shut. Well, didn't exactly. You swapped the cards. Just like that, the legend would be dashed to pieces. Huh. Well, it obviously didn't go in the way they wanted it to. Yes, a harmless prank in essence. It was by a quirk of fate that I happened to discover it. A quirk? I happened to put my hand in my pocket and found the card. The card she planted? Yes, I snuck a peek at it and found it was the Five of Hearts. I had a feeling something might happen, so I disposed of the card b before the game. Disposed? Where? There was an empty bottle of grape juice I had been drinking right beside me. I threw the card inside the bottle. The empty bottle of grape juice? The murder weapon? Oh, interesting. Yes, I rolled it up and shoved it in. The colored glass makes it hard to see. Hmm, a battle of wits between Deceiver and the would-be deceived. Sounds like a terrific drama. <laughs> a card inside the murder weapon, that's strange. Did the police miss it in their investigation? Maybe I'll take a look. Mr. Wright, the poker head of courtroom number three <laughs> approves of this battle of the wits. <laughs> Please revise your testimony with this new information. Then we can go and play some strip poker. I would enjoy it quite thoroughly if I was the one stripping. But please, 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 Your Honor, we don't have to do this. No, it's too late. My shirt's off now. 
Please revise your testimony with this new information. This is the problem, because he said when he discovered him that there's blood streaming from his head, but he's wearing a hat in this picture. And it was streaming backwards, so he couldn't have possibly seen it. Objection! Got you. Just fine. Mr. Wright, if I may. Yes? Take a look at this photograph of the crime scene. See the victim here? He's wearing a hat. I wouldn't think you could see blood on his forehead. Good point. How about nonchalantly, uh, Phoenix is slowly proving himself, like, guilty. He's like, uh, but you couldn't have seen that. There was a hat on his head. And Phoenix is like, uh, oh, that's a pretty good point. You know, I couldn't have. Uh, yeah, you should just arrest me on the spot. I mean, why not? Like, uh, Mr. Phoenix, we're trying to help you. And he's like, no, I'm, I'm probably guilty. <laughs> Justice. Next time you point out inconsistency, put in a little more oomph into it, if you may. Mr. Wright, can you explain this to the court? Uh, I forgot to mention something. I was the one who put that hat on his head. Huh? You? You put the hat on his head? The dead man's head? He wore it through our entire poker game. After calling the police when I returned to the scene, his head was in full view. Shining bright, just like it is in this photograph. And? I picked his hat up off the floor and put it on his head. What, what, why'd you do such a thing like that? All I can say is, I'm sorry. But that's the only thing I touched at the crime scene. So, Miss Orley didn't see it? It being the victim's, er, his head? I think not. She was out cold. I believe I was the only one who witnessed his head. Ah, uh, here we go again. Mr. Gavin? Ahem, pardon. It seems that our client is determined to lie his way through this case. What? what? We're trying to help him. What are you doing? What What are you doing and why are you... Oh no, he's totally gonna be like the villain or something for this game, isn't he? Oh, I don't want that. He's such a cool guy though, like... I don't think I'd want him as a villain personally, but... Hey, he, may, he might make a pretty damn good one for all I know. And once again... That's just for all I know. He can make a horrible villain. I wouldn't know. I just wouldn't. <laughs> Anyways, let's keep going. Hmm. Hey, he's still our client, isn't he? In any case, please continue with the cross-examination. I'm afraid decisive contradictions call for decisive evidence. Ah. Oh. Push him harder, Justice. Break him. Break him hard. Break his legs and arms. Uh, sir, I don't think I could even take him in a fight. It's like, he's just a defense attorney. So am I. Why do I get the feeling we're not on our client's side anymore? Because we are not. We probably are not. No matter what you think at the moment. That evening, Christoph and I had dinner. We sat at the table here in this photograph. Did you guys now? Interesting. Shady Smith walked in five minutes after Kristoff left. I discovered the trap during the game and disposed of the card in the bottle. The girl was knocked out cold by and Smith. Okay. Well, I don't know what else there is. Why would he put the hat on his head? That's what I'm trying to figure out, isn't it? Was caused by it, unless he's trying to hide the murder. The sub basement at the Borscht Bowl Club. Touch the check button for details. Doesn't nothing here shows why he would have done that. It just shows that Phoenix did do that, but it's not telling me exactly why he did it, which isn't very useful, in my opinion, at least. Deadly bottle. The thing is, we can't look inside the bottle. And look at the label, but... Examine? The bottle is completely empty. Oh, so the note's not in there anymore. That has nothing to do with his hat, though. I use... Wait, used by the defendant to notify the police from the restaurant's first floor. Defendant and Mr. Smith at Borscht Bowl Club. 
I don't know what it is. I honestly don't know what it is. Alright, well, can you tell us about the phone call? So far, you haven't told us anything about that. Could you explain why you called Mr. Gavin? I'd obviously gotten involved in a rather sticky affair. And I figured Kristoff's law offices would give me a friend rate for my defense fees. Oh, glad to hear you intend to pay. Oh, I'll pay in full, Kristoff. It was I who got you involved, after all. You may find the price of your defense quite high, my good friend. Quite high. Damn, okay. Like, evil confirmed. <laughs> Is this the truth that Mr. Wright was talking about? Justice, you know what you have to do. He's lying. Expose him now. Y y yes sir. I get it. I'm going to try presenting the phone on the statement where he says he has a phone call and see if he wants to tell us about it. Nope. Maybe it wants me to show them the bottle? Show them that there's nothing in it? Oh, there we go. There we go. Um, Mr. Wright, if I may. Yes? I've examined the bottle and I don't see any card in here. Hmm, no? What, Mr. Wright, surely isn't all- wait, surely ellipses isn't all you have to say for yourself. You usually sit here and talk to yourself in court like some sort of maniac anyway. I can't say I know what happened to the card. I did put it in that bottle, however. Huh? Perhaps a fifth person came and took it out. Oh, and a sixth person could have helped. Mr. Gavin, Mr. Wright is your client. My apologies, Your Honor. I won't have you disparaging our investigation either. We looked inside that bottle and there was nothing. Nothing, I tell you. So what's going on? Is Mr. Wright hoodwinking us again? Or did the card just disappear? I believe that's enough of that. Uh, Mr. Gavin? The witness's testimony is more like a travesty riddled with lies. Like a filthy, filthy liar. Look at him, he's all dirty and wearing that freaking beanie or whatever they call it these days. What do you kids call it? All I know is he's a filthy hobo. Send him to jail. I'm ba I'm beginning to see how you came close to your attorney's badge, or how you came to lose your attorney's badge seven years ago. Well, you certainly have a unique way of treating your clients, Kristoff. I never knew. Yeah, he's kind of a dick. <laughs> I believe it was you who threw the first stone. Mr. Wright, if you intend to ever tell the truth about this case, it's now or never. Don't be misled, I haven't told a single lie here. Uh? When I noticed the trap, I put the card in the bottle to dispose of it. And when I put the hat on the victim's head, let's just say I had a reason for doing that as well. A reason? That reason is right here. Your cell phone? That night. Recall that I spoke with defense attorney Gavin after calling the police. Just in case I recorded our conversation. What's this? Now we're all here. I see no reason why I shouldn't play it back to for the court. Kristoff, I seem to be in a bit of trouble. Mr. Wright, if you got your hand stuck in a tomato jar again, I am not coming down to help you. No, not this time, but... I have other parts stuck in jaws. What's this? Game's not going well. Something like that. The gentleman who challenged you, he turned out to be good? He turned out to be dead. Someone hit him hard. You mean someone cracked that flawless bone china plate? It wasn't you, was it? Me, please. The cop should be here any minute. I'm in your hands, should it come to that. Bone china plate? A kind of porcelain very smooth and shiny, and not plate, but pate. I believe he was referring to the certain gentleman's balding forehead. Hmm. The court appreciates the defendant's discretion is not indicating my forehead. <laughs> Judge is awesome. Wait a second. Something's not right about that phone call. 
So after Mr. Gavin ate dinner with you, he left the Borscht Bowl Club. Most certainly. Then, then how did he know? When did he see this? The bone china plate. Tell me now. Oh, that's right. Yes. That was when I began to see my good friend in a different light. Troubled, I returned to the crime scene. That's when I spotted Mr. Smith's head again. I was exact- Wait, I realized exactly what was wrong. Well, Mr. Gavin, the stage has been set. Perhaps you would like to explain this to the court. Exactly how did you come by your privileged knowledge of the victim's head? So this is your reason. The reason why you put the victim's hat back on. Your point, Mr. Gavin? It's come down to this, has it, Phoenix Wright? Order! I will have order, Mr. Payne! Yes, Your Honor. I believe this court is left with no other choice. Are you prepared to hear Defense Attorney Gavin's testimony? Uh, 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 well, um, as a prosecutor, I... Very well. We'll break for ten minutes. After which, Mr. Gavin will take a stand for a cross-examination. Are we clear on that? Crystal clear, Your Honor. Very well, this will be the final recess for the day. Let me save this real quick. Because I can't... The traditional saving for this game does not work. April 20th, 2.32 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. Mr. Gavin and Mr. Ryder both in the judge's chamber. Who'd have thought today would turn out like this? May I? Oh! Oh, is that Mr. Wright's daughter? Hi there. Huh, what? Hell, hell, I, oh god. I don't think I can give such, like, an adorable voice, can I? I don't think I can pull it out of my throat. H hello, sir. Please pick a card. What's all this about? Uh, is this one okay? Excellent. I have a message for you. You are being summoned to Nagal Island. I mean, the last hand is about to be played. You'll need a trump card to make it. A trump card? The card you have chosen is magical. Use it wisely and the game is yours. That's all. Use it wisely. I, I, uh, I have to find an inner voice that's, like, good enough for her. I, I don't know what it should be. Because she, she looks even younger than Maya. An ace? Where do I remember that card from? Oh, it's a card that came out of his pocket. Mr. Smith's, Mr. Smith's hand has three aces, and Mr. Wright's two. It is five aces in all. It is true, I have seen it, the fifth ace. There was cheating, I swear to you, vodka, potato, Boris. The missing of the fifth ace. Wait, this blotch of red, is this blood? You have your trump card. Now, now it's up to you to cut the deck and draw the truth. My father's fate is in your hands. I know you can do it. This bloodstained card is my trump card for finding the truth? What does that even mean? I fell deep into thought as my mind raced to understand what all of this meant. Yeah, me too, buddy. You're not the only one. <laughs> That girl. I'd seen her recently, but where? That's when I made the connection. Yep. I, well, I could figure that out almost instantly. What do you mean you've struggled to figure that out? That was kind of obvious, buddy. April 20th, 2012, 2.45 p.m. District Court. Courtroom number two. Court will now reconvene. Defense Attorney Christoph Gavin, will you please take the stand? Hello, I'm just up on this pedestal being sexy, I guess. Now then, if you would, Mr. Payne. Y yes, Your Honor. Miss... 
The witness will now name his occupation. Is this farce necessary, Your Honor? Believe me, far stranger things have gone on in this courtroom. Like that one time there was a clown in here. Or that other time there was fake Phoenix. I liked fake Phoenix better than real Phoenix, he was funny. Uh, Judge, I'm still in the room right now. Yes, I know that, and that's why I say these things. Fine, I'll play along. First, there's one thing we need to have made clear. How did you know about the secret beneath the victim's hat? By secret, I'm guessing he means the fact that Mr. Smith was bald. Forget my curiosity, but what is it about this fellow's head? Your Honor seems to have an inordain... Wait, inordinate interest in it. Objection! Objection! What? Oh yeah, I get to have Phoenix as my partner for this case. Let's go! I'm so hyped for this. Okay, let's let's do this. I wouldn't call it inord inordinate, Mr. Gavin. Mr. Wright. What do you think you're doing, Mr. Wright? Well, things sure look different from the other side. You know what I mean, Apollo? Speaking of looking from the other side, let's consider something for a second. The victim wore that hat all night, never once taking it off, except for that one time. That one time? Being the instant he was hit. Oh! When Mr. Wright returned from reporting the crime, the hat was lying on the floor. Mr. Wright picked it up and placed it on the victim's head. In other words, in order to have seen Mr. Smith's head, you would have had to be at the scene of the crime, at the time of the crime. In other words, you would have to be the real killer, D-killer. Isn't that funny? No, not really. Oh well. Is that what you're trying to say? Is that what you're trying to say? Oh, I, I feel like if I give him a slightly more, like, sinister voice, like, ugh, like that. Oh, I kind of want to. Not bad, Apollo. Eh, eh, eh. Mr. Gavin? I'm afraid that I haven't been entirely honest with the court. What, what? What? Oh, I assure you I had the noblest of intentions. I did it all to protect my client, Mr. Wright. Huh? And yet, I'm afraid in the current situation, I see little reason to hide anything. Very well. Allow me to tell you the truth of what happened that night. Finally, you begin your testimony. Jesus Christ, I've been sitting here forever. I could lose all my hair. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. I could have grown a glorious beard. Oh, look what I did. Tell us. How were you involved in the events of that fateful night? Witness testimony. That fateful night. The rage I sensed in that man told... The rage I sensed in that man that night troubled me, so I returned to the club. I went down to the basement and peeked in through the little window in the hideout. It must have been right after the murder took place. The victim was dead as he appears in the photo. A bald head, an unconscious girl, and Wright holding a bottle in his hand. I sensed that it was not in the best place for me to be at the time, so I left. That's when I came. That's when the call came from Wright. Ah, so you witnessed the murder. For better or worse, I missed the actual moment of the deed. Mr. Gavin, may I remind you that you are on Mr. Wright's defense team? Your testimony is clearly disadvantageous to your client. Yeah, there's some things going on here that I need explained right now, mister. What else can I say? I'm standing on the witness stand, after all. So you are, Mr. Gavin. Hmm? And you had to testify as you just did. You had to tell them you saw the scene of the crime through that little window. Uh, Mr. Wright. You had to say that because that was the only probable window of opportunity, right, Apollo? Oh. Mr. Wright, the defense should do the cross-examination, not the defendant. Mr. Justice, are you prepared? Yes, Your Honor. I can't believe I'm going up against Mr. Gavin. This trial is getting weirder and weirder. Eh, 
Yeah, you will go down before me. The rage I sensed in that man that night seemed to trouble me, so I returned to the club. Went down to the basement and peeked in through the little window to the hideout. Wait, what? Why would you... Wait, what is he talking about? Peeked in. The little window. You mean the one used to keep watch up, s up the stairs? Yes, a relic of the ancient past. The black marketers use it, I believe. Why did you go through the trouble of peeking in through the window? Wouldn't it have been easier to just open the door and go into the room? I didn't want to upset Wright, you see. Upset, Mr. Wright? Yes, what if my fears had been founded? I'd be walking in on a on their match, bad form to say the least. Hmm. So far everything he's saying makes sense. It must have been right after the murder took place. The victim was dead as he appears in the photo. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. In which photo? By photo, you mean the second photograph of the crime scene? Precisely, you see. He wasn't wearing his hat then. I saw his head and he w when he was dead. And when Mr. Wright came along and replaced his hat... You descri can you describe the scene of the crime for us? A bald head, unconscious... A bald head, an unconscious girl, and Wright holding a bottle in his hand. We know why Wright was holding the bottle. Those were only... Wait, those were the only three at the scene of the crime. Yes, and as far as I saw, at least. What, then we're back to where we started. Good grief. The killer was the defendant, Phoenix Wright. Who else could have... Who else could it have been? I'm still waiting for Ace Attorney pain investigations. <laughs> but why don't you talk to the police? Two reasons. First, I didn't actually witness the very moment of the crime. Second, my office was asked to defend Mr. Wright. Even after seeing what I had seen, I couldn't abandon my dear friend. Hmm. Friendship is... Oh, objection! There must have been someone else there at the moment of the crime. Justice, I just said I saw no one, not a soul. But, but that goes against what Mr. Wright said. Ah, uh, yes, this mysterious fourth person. Who conveniently... Uh, who could, would conveniently be the real killer, I suppose. Glad to see we agree, Mr. Gavin. Let me pose this... Let me pose a question, then. Tell me. What possible reason would the real killer have to swap the cards in the victim's hand? Hmm, perhaps you can show us a reason why such a thing would be necessary. How can I show something I can't find myself? Remember, Apollo, the card that was swapped out was the fifth ace. Oh, Trucy handed that to us. Okay. Um. Show evidence? Yeah, I'll show the evidence. Why not? It's now or never. Was that her name, Trucy? I feel like I've heard that before, but I'm not quite sure. Trucy Wright sounds okay. I don't know. Like, I've seen the character before, and I heard the name Trucy, but I didn't know she was Phoenix's daughter. If I'm getting the name right right now, that is. Right, 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 right. God. <laughs> that last name's awful. Sorry if any of you have that last name and I just insulted you. You're a beautiful person because you're my subscriber and you're different. <laughs> Anyways. Ellipses. Then go ahead and point out your reason, Mr. Justice. Why did the killer take the fifth ace? The reason is, uh, this. Is that an ace? Why, why is, why does it got blood on it? <laughs> right next to the spade. What, 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 oh. That face change, what? This is insane, why isn't anyone told, to, why wasn't I told about this, why? Could this be, could this be the missing fifth ace? Incon in inconceivable, how could you? What are you doing with that card? Um, well, that's the thing. 
Why is Mr. Gavin so upset? It's just a fishy card from some fishy girl. <laughs> That's gonna be your waifu, I'm assuming, later, so... Don't call her fishy. It's not nice. Um, oh, that card? It's mine. That is, I picked it up at the Borscht Bowl Club that night after the murder occurred. I gave it to my daughter. Cards are her stock and trade, after all. Oh, wow, his voice. Objection. No, no. Impossible. Unacceptable. The court can't accept this evidence. It's a fraud. A fraud? How can you be so sure? What? what I would think the only person who could claim it was a fraud. Wait, I would think the only person who could claim it was a fraud. Yeah, okay, that's what I said. Would be the one who took the real card from the crime scene, the real killer. Allow me to elaborate. What if this trace of blood was the reason? The reason for? For the killer to take the card from the crime, from the scene of the crime. Where are you going with this? Take another look at the photo and at the victim's head. At the moment of the crime, his hat fell onto the floor, and the trickle of blood ran from his forehead down the back of his head. Now, couldn't a drop of that blood have fallen on one of the cards? I suppose. The killer then took the card to hide the blood. R regardless, that evidence is non-permissible. Oh? Right, regardless of how you wasted your last seven years you used to be a lawyer, you know what a serious crime it is to conceal evidence. Oh, we, we can discuss the finer points of our legal system later. What's important now is that I've answered your question. Wh what are you talking? Oh, God. Like, right is so on par right now. Or so on point, I should say. Not on par. I say that way too much. But, like, he is so confident in this game. It's ridiculous. And I don't know if Spirit of Justice and Dual Destinies are supposed to happen before this or after, but if they happen after this, it's nonsensical almost. You wanted to know why the killer would have taken a card from this crime scene. And now I've told you. That one drop of blood would have been decisive evidence, you see. Objection. I love that voice. Th this is- this is baseless conjecture. Baseless. Oh? Oh, yeah, there we go. That's what I was waiting for. Oh, I assure you, it's quite based. But what? It's amazing, really. How a single drop of blood on this card can lead us to the truth. It's quite simple. Well, Apollo? Y yes Try picturing the scene of the crime. In your head. Use the power of imagination. Phoenix, can you stop doing that? Imagination. Oh, whoa, what? The murder took place in the hideout. The body of the luckless victim was found at the poker table. And before the killer swapped the card out, there was a single card with a drop of blood on it in the victim's hand. Given this, there is one decisive problem with this scene. Well, what is it? Let's keep this simple, shall we? Given that there was a drop of blood on a card, whose position in this diagram doesn't fit. The victims, the killers, the witnesses, the second witnesses. Whose doesn't fit in the blood with the bloody card? Okay, so I just kind of zoned out on what he just said, but whose doesn't fit? Whose position doesn't fit? Hers fits just fine. I, she has practically an alibi. But if the door's over here, and the window's over here, and the victim's over here... Huh. And he wanted to hide the bloody card, which would be over here, but... Well, there's only two things that don't really add up. So if he peek in through this window... Uh, I'm having a hard time, actually, with this. I don't really know what I'm going for here. Uh, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, you know what I think? I think it's a victim. Doesn't make sense, does it? Well, isn't the victim's position... Isn't it the victim's position that's the problem? I don't follow your logic here, Mr. Justice. Well, look at the victim was struck on the head, sending him back in his chair. You think any blood would fall behind the body, not onto the table in front of him? 
Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Because his head was all, like, bashed in. All the blood went backwards because I guess he, like, fell over kind of in his chair. And it was all streaming behind him. So there would have been blood, like, all over the floor and everything. But And Wright put the hat back on his head. Huh. Okay. Ah. Oh. Take a look at the photo again. If he bled in this position, the blood would fall onto the floor, not on the... Oh, yeah, because the cards were in front of him still. Makes sense. Why, that's right. So what does this mean? Incidentally, we are still sitting on in swivel chairs. Sw swivel chairs? Oh, man. Apollo, try turning the chair around. Woo! <laughs> that, was, that was good. The chair is facing the other way. It would have to be. So we have to assume that at the time of the murder, the victim's chair was facing away from the table. When Mr. Wright returned from informing the police, which way was the chair facing? When I came back to the room, the body was facing as seen in this photo. That would mean the killer turned the chair back around. Let's take the next step. Look at the diagram once more. We knew the victim was facing away from the table at the time of the murder, but this creates another significant contradiction. Again? Let's test your reasoning skills again, shall we? Apollo, whose location on this diagram contradicts our new understanding of the crime? The victim... Wait, the victims, the killers, the witnesses, the second witnesses. Uh, who's contradicts it? Well, if he said that he saw him leaning back in his chair with blood dripping off this way, then this position wouldn't make sense because if he's leaning backwards, then you couldn't see the blood at all, I'm guessing. So I'm going to say this. I'm going to say Gavin's or... Yeah. Let's hope. It just, yeah, there we go. What doesn't make sense... You mean to say I don't make sense? Oh, um, no, of course you do, uh, sir. As I thought. Help. <laughs> uh, I guess I got that one wrong. I'm a little hard of hearing. Did you just say something? Would you be kind enough to show the court one more time what you mean? Let's test your reasoning skills again, shall we? Apollo, whose location on this diagram contradicts our new understanding of this? The victims, the killers, the witnesses, the second witnesses. Okay, I guess I'm really overthinking it again. And it would make sense that Phoenix Wright didn't run all the way around to the table, and then he turned his chair around, and then Phoenix Wright hit. Like, that doesn't make any sense, so. The victim was struck from the front, correct? Indeed. Well, wouldn't it be hard for the killer to hit him from the front? Sitting where his indicator currently is, I think it would be quite hard, yes. Oh god, would you just shut up? I hate your voice. Yes, but what you're saying makes no sense. Why would the victim suddenly turn his face to the wall in the middle of a game? I believe a sufficient reason will soon come to light. But what? There's something in this diagram that makes far less sense, actually. Look again at the diagram. Apollo, if the victim was struck while he was sitting as shown here, where would his assailant be standing? Try marking it on the diagram. What? what but... There's no room to put a mark where the killer should be. Don't worry, let's think this through and see what we can find. We know the victim was facing toward the wall at the time of the crime. That's the only thing we know for sure. Try not to for try to forget about everything else. Okay, so um I'm I'm gonna do right up here next time. But I don't know how long this episode's running because I've had several technical issues with this, including like sound problems from this game. So I will catch you guys next time. Thank you for watching, and thanks for the support on the series. I think it's awesome that a lot of you find this entertaining. I'm going to have a hell of a time editing this with the different audio levels and crackling noise, but it's definitely worth it. So, become a member of the Dust Brigade today and subscribe if you only really want to. And I would appreciate it if you liked the video, if you did like it. Dislike it if you dislike it. That's fine, too. Have, um, yeah, that's all I have to say. Have a wonderful day. Riding out.